Good morning, my name is Doreen McIntyre. I'm a nurse at Children's Minneapolis and currently serving as second vice president of the Minnesota Nurses Association. MNA represents 22,000 nurses who make up 80% of all bedside nurses in Minnesota. We're here today to share the results of our annual Concern for Safe Staffing Report. Nurses use these forms to document when patients are harmed or when, in our professional opinion, patients did not receive the safe and quality care they deserved due to substandard staffing. When m &A began collecting Concern for Safe Staffing forms back in 2014, nurses submitted close to 2,000 forms. Mm -hmm. Today, it is devastating to see the total forms have jumped once again to the highest we have ever seen, with 8,437 forms submitted. Let me say that again, 8,437 forms submitted. Not only is this more than a 300% increase of forms since 2014, this is, a, this is an increase of over 7% in the last year alone. And these are only the cases of unsafe staffing that have been reported. Imagine how many more go unreported. As registered nurses, we are expected to, to deliver high quality, safe, ethical, and therapeutic care despite the poor conditions executives created in our hospitals. These executives continue to foster conditions where nurses face inadequate staffing levels and insufficient resources to provide the quality care patients deserve. This year's report also highlights 7,029 cases in which management did not respond or responded inappropriately to nurses' concern for unsafe staffing. What does no response or inappropriate response from management mean? When we tell our managers that staffing levels are unsafe for our patients, a lot of them will say things like, well, do the best you can, or we always seem to get by. Many don't respond at all, and those that do often are very slow to respond. Unsafe staffing in our hospital has been going on for so long that managers no longer feel the urgency of the situation. But nurses still do because we know our patients deserve better. As a nurse at Children's Hospital, my patients are children, and the nature of caring for children means we also interact with parents and family members of those patients on a daily basis. Families in the ICU will ask their nurse, how many patients do you have today? Because they know that nurse, if a nurse has too many patients, they don't feel it's safe to leave their child that day, and they have to stay at the bedside. This is not okay. As those who are at the bedside day and night, we know that our patients need what, what our patients need. Nurses know when staffing levels are unsafe and a patient's safety is at risk. 8,437 instances of unsafe staffing is far too many. The 2,000 instances in 2014 were far too many. Nurses and patients cannot continue like this. Thank you. I'd like to now introduce Sandy Anderson. Hi there. My name is Sandy Anderson, and I'm a labor and delivery nurse in the Mother Baby Center at St. John's Hospital. Working in labor and delivery, I know the impact and importance of having enough feet on the ground. A nurse's assignment on our floor includes a couplet, both a mother and a baby. Sometimes when a patient is in labor, they don't always think to call ahead and let us know they're coming. They come in a panic and are in need of care. We need to have enough nurses on the floor to adjust for these changes. When we have safe levels in staffing, that means we have enough nurses who have manageable loads and a freely assigned nurse who can take on that unexpected patient who has just come through the door. Concern for safe staffing forms allow for nurses to report not just that we experienced an unsafe patient assignment, but why that assignment was unsafe. These reasons include delays in care of treatment or treatments, delays in medications, the inability to answer call lights, an assault or injury to another patient or visitor, and more. Last year, 4,802 accounts of safe staffing issues causing a delay in call lights being answered were reported. And between 2021 and 2022, delays in medication increased nearly 20%. Unsafe staffing on a labor and delivery floor means that a nurse receives an additional couplet. That means not one, 
but two additional patients, a mother and a baby. On my floor, the inability to answer call lights could look like a first time mother in pain and scared, waiting for a nurse to bring them something that could help alleviate the pain or to talk to them through what's happening. At the same time, another mother may be on an infusion to prevent them from having a medical crisis. A delay in medication for that mother could have dire consequences. I've been a nurse for 43 years this month. I have worked in multiple hospitals and on multiple units. I can attest that unsafe staffing happens everywhere, from rural hospitals to large metro area hospitals. When nurses do not have the resources necessary to provide patients with the care they deserve, we experience moral suffering and distress. We only want to provide the best level of care to our patients in their most vulnerable time. We need safe staffing now for the sake of our patients and the sake of our profession. Thank you. Carrie. Thank you, Sandy. Good morning. My name is Carrie Mortrude, and I'm the nurse staffing specialist at the Minnesota Nurses Association. I am a registered nurse, and unfortunately, I left the bedside in 2005 because of unsafe staffing. There had been an issue with an elderly gentleman who had open heart surgery the night before, and I was told to put him in a hallway in a wheelchair with a telepack because I was getting another patient. So in the ICU, I was going to be assigned three patients, one to which I couldn't even see as I was giving care to the others. Since I left the bedside nearly two decades ago, these problems have only grown worse. You can see that in the numbers we have right here for you today, but I wanna share a few examples from just one health system, Mayo Health Systems, to give a sense of what patients and nurses are currently experiencing in all of the hospitals everywhere in our state. One nurse attempted to refuse an unsafe assignment because it was going to cause her to be able to not be able to deliver safe care to all the rest of her patients. She was told by management that there were no other options but to take the unsafe assignment. In another case, deliberate understaffing by management resulted in an infant on a breathing equipment to be cared for by nurses who were not properly trained on that equipment. Another nurse told of a shift where four behavioral health patients needed one-to-one -one nursing care, but the unit was too short-staffed. They attempted to call a manager, and the first time, no one answered. When the nurse called back a half hour later, the response she received was, okay, thanks. In a Mayo emergency room, Shore staff nurses were overwhelmed by patients being boarded in the ER with no staffed beds for them to be admitted to and no staff to manage the emergency department. In another emergency department, patients had to be diverted away from that emergency department because management failed to staff the unit. In yet another case, a patient left the emergency department without receiving any care due to severe understaffing in the unit. Another nurse at the health system reported that severe short staffing caused delays in patient care, but there was no manager on the shift to address the issue, and nurses were so short staffed that they could not even file the concern for safe staffing forms until after the shift. Nurses were left with no help, no other option, but to struggle through assignments that put their patients at risk. Supervisors at these facilities are known to retaliate against nurses who file unsafe staffing reports, including one who relentlessly followed a nurse around asking her questions about what she could have done differently instead of attempting to fix the problem. One supervisor told nurses to take on patients not appropriate for their unit because the manager said, I have beds to fill. These supervisors are telling nurses that the policy of their system is if we have a bed, we need to fill it regardless. It doesn't matter if we don't have staff. Some of these supervisors even encourage nurses to actually fill out the concern for safe staffing forms because units are so understaffed, including a case where there were only three nurses for 10 patients. 
one over five of whom were all critical care. Unsafe staffing is driving nurses away from the bedside. Earlier this year, m and released these, this year's Why We Left, nurses, Nursing Workforce Report, which identified chronic understaffing, hospital management issues, and other working conditions as the top issues driving nurses away from bedside care. The report was based on responses by nearly 500 nurses to a survey of more than 2,400 M&A nurses who left a bedside nursing position within just the last year. The survey found that the number one issue identified by nurses as the top factor driving them away from the bedside was short staffing. The Keeping the Nurses at the Bedside Act will give nurses a voice in the staffing process to improve staffing levels and retain nurses, ultimately to protect their patients. To hospitals who do not think this bill is needed in their hospital and feel they are already doing things well, they should welcome the system, which will reward their good results with a positive public grade. But as these stories and these forms make clear, understaffing is a problem, across the entire state. What this bill will do for every patient at every hospital is provide transparency so patients understand what level of care they can expect. Nurses' working conditions are patients' care conditions. Let's pass this bill in the health omnibus so nurses do not have to keep coming back to the Capitol with worsening staffing reports year after year. As you've heard today, <clears throat> the issue of unsafe staffing is only getting worse. We have been saying for years, both at the negotiating table and at the legislature, that nurses need a voice in staffing solutions. We need real, concrete solutions to the staffing crisis in Minnesota. That is why nurses brought the keeping, <clears throat> excuse me, keeping nurses at the bedside act to the legislature. After its passage in the Senate and House as part of the Health and Human Services omnibus bills, we are hopeful that legislators will keep our bill intact as it comes through the conference committee. Thank you. It's, it's not uncommon for, oh sure, sorry. It's not uncommon for a patient and or their family member to ask outright, how was your night? How many patients do you have? Or when they don't see you for a couple of hours, is everything okay? They, they're noticing it. They notice that nurses aren't sitting at desks, they're not in the hallways, they're, they're in the rooms, they're doing things. So it is noticeable. Mm -hmm. That an extra stress too, dealing with family uh, you know, else want to answer explain that to, you know. it is because um, as as we have said from day one we want to be able to take care of patients we want to be able to provide them with the care that we would expect and that we would expect our families to get so it when we say moral distress that is true you know there are too many shifts where you're either going into the med room counting to 10 taking that deep breath going into the bathroom maybe hit, crying a few tears and then just kind of picking yourself back up again and going back out. Because if you're not there taking care of the patients, there isn't anybody else to do that. And it's really distressing. And even when things are going on in your own life and you may have to call out on a shift, that is not done lightly. You know, nurses are, we're always wondering, okay, who's going to pick up the load because I'm not there? Because we already know that we're not staffed to cush. We're staffed to just the basic minimum, if not even that. Uh, one of our nurses uh, that we've talked to works up in Duluth in a kind of a, a post-critical care unit with cardiac patients. One weekend, there were no nurses scheduled, none. Not even two weeks out, none. So they were reliant on people just picking up. You can't sustain your life that way in your practice. Thank you. I think to your first question, I could go through an entire list of what patients are starting to do because they know how short-staffed it is. Even when I was at the bedside, I would have patients on the cardiac unit 
wait to put their call light on because they thought other patients needed me more. <laughs> so they would actually wait with chest pain, right? Mm -hmm. Until it got to the point where it's so bad that then they finally told me, yeah, I've been having really bad chest pain for the past 10 minutes, but I saw that how busy you were. Mm -hmm. So they are rationing their own care in the hospital. And I know you guys can attest to that. We've had patients leave their rooms to go find linen on their own. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. We've had family members come in and shower and feed people because there isn't anyone to help with that. I have personal experience. My mother was in the hospital, and when I asked if she could take a shower after day four, they said, oh, we don't do that anymore. And we know that when we went to nursing school, that's part of delivering care. Right. You're doing a skin assessment. Absolutely. You're talking to them to see what their cognition is like, right? Like there are so many other things you're doing while you're walking someone to the bathroom, mm -hmm. while you're cleaning them up, <clears throat> while you're feeding them. And if someone else has to do that, you're missing that entire piece, exactly. right? Mm -hmm. okay. Definitely. Of course. Um, my name is Susan Kreitz, and I worked um, for 37 years, 12-hour night shifts. And it, I was so lucky to be able to work as a nurse and be able to give the care that I, that I wanted to give to patients. And then things changed with the merger and um, staffing was starting to be getting less and less. And I left the bedside, which I wanted to work. I, I love being a nurse. I love taking care of patients and seeing them improve and get better. And, but I couldn't do it anymore because there's, um, I, it was an ICU, and we had five rooms with patients in. I was charged, but I was also in charge of the tellies monitors, and I had a vent patient. And I also had a little grandma who was, you know, healing from surgery. And the lights are going off, and the more lights go off, the more you get frustrated because you can't get out there. There's no one out there. There's no way to get a hold of anybody. And if you do get a hold of them on the vocera, they say, well, I'm in a room with a patient I can't leave. Okay? So I quickly did what I needed to do, and I went into Grandma's room. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. And she said, oh, no, I'm sorry. She said, I know you're busy, but she said, I couldn't hold. I had to go to the bathroom, so I went in the bed. Now, what kind of dignity is that? for a little grandma. And it just, I'm sorry, it just makes me sick. Thank you. <laughs>